Bitcoin's volatility is squeezed to dangerously low numbers, but now question is where do we see the break? Do we see the break to the downside or can the bulls pull off a miracle? And what's cracking, you guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mango Grow. My name is Krusha, and this is today's Bitcoin analysis video. Bitcoin is still range bound. We haven't pumped, we haven't dumped. There's your analysis. Bye bye. I'm just joking. I'm only joking, guys. <laughs> Oh, it's not been very rewarding trading Bitcoin off late. But anywho, I don't have Sean with me today, unfortunately, since it is still technically his birthday week and we have family over. He's there busy entertaining family. Well, I am going to be here to give you guys the lowdown on Bitcoin. Now, uh, before well, we jump into the analysis, just a quick reminder, since it's Sean's birthday, it is discount season. So we have discounts going on on the seed program, as well as all of the indicators. I'll be attaching the coupon code on the screen, as well as in the description below. So take advantage of that if you're someone looking to hunker down in this consolidation phase to sharpen your trading skills. Because when the bull run begins, you're not going to have the time or the mind space to actually learn. You're going to be too busy FOMOing into positions just to put things into perspective. The last bull run that played out i believe in five months yeah five months guys we did 400 percent in five months so when the market is giving you an opportunity to actually hunker down and learn whatever the hell it is that you want to learn use it use it well okay so now as far as bitcoin is concerned i do believe that we have volatility on the horizon and here's what i'm seeing all right if i look at my the volatility depth on bitcoin's chart i'm currently on the daily time frame now, I want you guys to look at the indicator at the bottom of my screen. It's that histogram right there. And every time we're in that green zone of the histogram, that means volatility has died down. All right. Red is volatility has increased to its peak. Now, every time we've been in the green, I'm currently on the daily time frame. We've seen a breakout in volatility. Now, this has not happened too often. Right, so now we have one right here, right now at this point, the histogram has turned green, telling us that volatility, volatility has shrunk to its lowest numbers. The last time we had it was back here in August. And when we did have that volatility broke, but we broke to the downside. And that's the thing with volatility. Yeah, volatility could be looming on the horizon. However, it could either break to the upside or to the downside. All right, we got to use our TA to give us the where is the high probability trade at? Who's really got the edge here? Is it the bulls or is it the bears? Now, of course, I will be giving you my thoughts on who's got the edge here. But for now, I want to really draw your attention to, well, that decrease in volatility with these dangerously low numbers. Now, the last time this histogram actually turned green, telling us that, hey, volatility is at those dangerously low numbers on the daily time frame was right here in August of 2023. And when volatility did break out, we saw a breakout, but to the downside. Now, prior to August of 2023, we got it right here in May of 2023. We put in a bit more of that um, uh, consolidation on that falling wedge only for the price to then break out. Right. So then prior to that was in December of 2022, which was us actually emerging out of that bear market phase when Bitcoin was sitting at 15K. And once again, when volatility did break out, we actually saw a pump to the upside. Right. That was this pump right here. And if I just zoom out of this picture, guys, you'll notice that on the daily time frame, we don't really see this volatility depth go to these dangerously low numbers where the histogram actually turns green. The last time we had it prior to December of 2022 was only here in July of 2020. And that's when we were actually emerging out of that entire bear market phase, right? That COVID bear market phase. Um, and Bitcoin should have been sitting at 7K. Okay, 9.2K from 9.2K all the way to 60. So when we saw the volatility break, it broke to the upside. But that was the last time we actually had the daily volatility go down to these dangerously low numbers. Now, once again, guys, we have it right here. Okay, September of 2023. But now question is, volatility can either break to the upside or it can break to the downside. Who's got the edge here? And now if you're being completely unbiased, whew, the bears have the edge. The bears have the edge. Like if you look at the entire set of landscape right now, we had the SEC lose a case against GBDC as far as that ETF is concerned. And that should have actually added a bullish tailwind to Bitcoin. Now, while we did see this pump um, right here in August, in tw on 29th of August, right? This, this is the pump that I'm talking about. That was not enough. I mean, we got that got sold into dramatically and also then went lower. And to think that a case for an actual ETF has never been stronger ever in Bitcoin's history, that pump should have then had a sustained trend, but instead it got sold into. 
right? That's not what we want to see on the chart. There's a clear disconnect. You can also look at divergences play out as far as events are concerned and price action. When there's a divergence in that, that is something to also heed to. And another thing adding to the bearish bias, of course, is the Mango Dynamic indicator on the weekly time frame. Now, the Mango Dynamic, guys, we've been using this to keep us on the right side of the entire market cycle. When price is living over the Dynamic indicator with the Dynamic turned green, that is telling us that, hey, this is bull run territory. Stay bullish, remain bullish, right? So we're looking at the weekly Dynamic price relative to the weekly Dynamic and price relative to the four-day Dynamic. Now, we lost the four-day Dynamic indicator uh, quite some time time ago this was 17th of August and we have been living underneath underneath that region for some time with that dynamic cloud turned red okay so we've already lost this this was one of our cornerstone bull run indicators so this was the first one to actually go off once again now on the weekly time frame we've lost it yet again and if this week closes underneath that dynamic cloud okay we have lost yet another bull run indicator that we have been looking at Okay, now the dynamic cloud, for those of you who do not have access to the dynamic indicator, but you want the levels, here it is. Dynamic resistance right now comes in at around $26,348. Okay, it's a range. It's 26.3K going all the way up to $27,000. That is your range. Now, of course, guys, these levels are dynamically changing. With every new weekly candle, the numbers on these levels change. Okay, so if you want to keep up with that, make sure you're hitting the sub and the bell icon because I will be bringing this up on every daily video. All right, so now that we've established it, okay, we should have a bearish bias here just based on our indicators, our objective indicators that's only looking to keep us on the right side of Bitcoin. Should we get hasty here and be like, okay, Bitcoin is falling today, GG for the bulls, bull run over, the bears take over from here. Is this where we basically, you know, toss the towel in? Um, I'm saying no. Um, the bears still have a very, very important level to fight off. Okay, now I brought this up in the previous video. And what is that level, guys? That was primarily hinged on the monthly 10 simple moving average. Historically, historically, the monthly 10 has basically helped us identify bull run and bear market territories for Bitcoin. Every time Bitcoin has taken out the monthly 10 simple moving average, okay, and we've lived over that, we've, have, we've had confirmed closes over the 10 SMA that has marked bull run territory for Bitcoin. Now we had one right here in May 2012 marking the first run up, right? That was a good, 23,153% on that bull run ever since we actually took out the 10 SMA. The next one came in here on October 2015. From when we took it out all the way to the top, that was a good 7,849% uh, for Bitcoin. The next one was right here getting out of the 3K region, April 2019, all the way up to 14K. Okay, that was 173%. The next time we got sustained closes over um, the, the 10 SMA was April 2020. I'm sorry, I don't have that marked out. Um, and all the way to $60,000, that was a good 663%. And now we have finally taken out the 10 SMA once again in Jan of this year. Okay, now question is, have we lost the 10 SMA just yet? No, guys, we have not lost the 10 SMA just yet. Okay, the 10 SMA comes in at around $25,052, right? So that is the level that I am going to be looking for Bitcoin to lose to tell me that, hey, the bulls are tossing the towel in, they're done. We're likely coming down for another local low on the monthly time frame. but $25,052 is the level that I'm going to be looking for the bears to fight off. All right, so getting back on over to the weekly time frame, let's go ahead and mark out $25,052. So for now, I'll be looking for the bears to fight off $25,000 for me to then be looking for further downside on Bitcoin, at least immediate continuation to the downside on Bitcoin. Until we take that level out, I'm not going to be getting too hasty with any more shorts on Bitcoin. Okay, and also guys, just to drive in how important of a level $25,000 is throughout this entire consolidation when Bitcoin actually broke all the way down to 18.7K first, down to 15K, throughout that entire bear market consolidation, every rally was rejected where? It was rejected at $25,000. Okay, the first rally right here, let me just get my brush out. Okay, rejected at 25K, came back down 15K, that was the FTX dump. When we actually rallied back up, where do we get rejected at again? $25,000, right? 
broke down once again. That was the banking crisis. Once again, rallied, broke 25K right here on the rally out of the banking crisis. Came down, put in a falling wedge, got supported where? $25,000, broke out came back down and where are we sitting at right now $25,000 this is a key level I'm not fighting it okay so $25,000 is that support I will be looking for the bears to break in order to then anticipate further downside on Bitcoin okay what are the next targets that I'm looking at for Bitcoin well I'm keeping this rel relatively simple as far as downside targets are concerned contingent on us breaking 25k okay just put on your Ichimoku cloud I'm looking for the first target at around the Kijun coming in at at 23.6k uh, that is target number one target number two that I'm looking at comes in at around $20,000 Okay, how am I getting target number two? I'm just looking at the measured move of this M-like formation right here. Breaking 25K would also be us breaking the neckline of that bearish pattern. The M-like double top formation is a bearish pattern on a technical standpoint. Measured move to which will take Bitcoin all the way down to $20,000. Okay, now for those of you asking me, Krisha, is there any case that the bulls could take over here? I am so fed up of Bitcoin being so bloody bearish and every consolidation breaking to the downside. Is there any, any chance for the bulls? And I think there is. And here's what I'm looking at. It's not confirmed just yet. Okay, so it's still relatively weak compared to the bearish picture. So just keep that in mind. Here's the bullish case for Bitcoin. Get on over to your weekly time frame. I'm seeing bullish divergences across the board. Unconfirmed, unconfirmed, but it's there, it's looming. Okay, now the first one I'm seeing right here, the strongest one I'm seeing right here is on the weekly time frame. You can see um, your oscillators put in a very, very uh, distinct downtrend right here. Okay, on the Stokes and the RSI in the same corresponding periods. And in that period, if you're looking at price action, we're putting in a higher low on price action. Not confirmed just yet because we don't have an uptick just yet. I want to see this piece of price action right here, this entire range of consolidation, actually form as a low. Now, in order for this to get confirmed, in order for this bullish divergence to actually find some a level of confirmation, we need to see price take out this wick high right here. Okay. So we're looking at the wick high of um, the week of 28th of August, which was last week. Okay, the wick high coming in, what's the high on that? At around $28,142. So mark that out on your charts. If price gets supported at $25,000, okay, but then also breaks out of $28,000, that is a confirmation on your bullish divergence. All right, at which point I do believe that there is um, there's going to be a bullish tilt. Um, but of course, we're not going to jump the gun here. Okay, when we get that, if we get that, I will be giving you the lowdown on Bitcoin's picture then. But for now, this is the picture. I do believe that the bears have the edge as of now. Okay, if the technicals change, you will know. So make sure to hit the sub and the bell icon to follow through with Bitcoin story. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and I'll see you guys in the next update. With this, trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way and have a fantastic weekend.